Good morning. So, is it even morning? No, it's <laughs> it's 12:45. Uh, cold outside though. It's like minus 15. Got down to minus eight around like nine o'clock, and then it was minus 13, and now it's minus 15 again. Snowed a lot. We had another snowfall warning yesterday. So uh, this is what my beautiful plowed yard looks like. You know, gross. Mills all covered in snow again. And lots. Like that's another, probably another, I don't know, eight, ten inches maybe. Way too much anyways. Uh, sucks. So glad we got that built. I didn't get that uh, Gus Gus, the T9. I didn't get him back in far enough. So the snow blows on his hood still. But the TJ... He, uh, he's nice. That's the, the T9's dad's tractor anyway, so it doesn't really matter if he has snow on him. I only care about the TJ in the back. That's mine. That's the seating tractor. Uh, lots of snow on the roofs. Lots of snow everywhere. It's cold. Be another go of plowing, but we're going to get another load of snow here again tonight, so may as well wait. In the meantime, uh, Buddy and I are in the shop, so first thing we had to do was repair the electrical see he's working on his bike uh we got this i don't know these uh solar battery testers i think they're pretty good i think they're like more of an industrial one but what a piece of junk they got like they did this wiring at the bottom all wrong so it's you know it's always i don't know if they build everything for california now or what but you know when you're trying to boost your stuff or put your battery chargers on stuff and it's minus 30 Anywhere where these wires just go in and bend, they break. So I wish people could get a hold of that, that not everywhere is uh, plus 20 all the time because it's, it's super hard. So anyways, these wires were all broke and uh, Buddy and I, we took, took it apart and, and fixed it because, well, that's what you should do if you can. You should fix it, not throw it away and get another one. We had uh, tremendous success with Leon and his turbo. Everything's all back together and uh, washed up, running running just fine. We haven't experienced a leak yet again, but we also haven't run it really. So all I did was drive it back in to put the hood on and everything. My backhoe wouldn't start this morning. I had to load a load of molasses. So that's why these booster cables are hooked from Leon to the backhoe. But I wanted to raise another question to the few people that watch my videos. Uh, <clears throat> curious, I've been told you don't put deep cycle batteries in equipment. Now, why is that? Uh, I don't really, like they have cold cranking amps, they have cranking amps. These ones actually have marine cranking amps. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, if it says it's got cold cranking amps and they're like 800 and some, I think. Uh, you know, why can't I put it in my backhoe? Like, we always... <clears throat> the reason we end up with these is we have a... The rare occasion, like twice a year when we go fishing to a lake that we have around here. Uh, we have a little aluminum boat with a trolling motor. So, we need a... My understanding is deep cycle batteries just hold that charge more. Or they're better for that application, like electric motors. But I'm curious. The battery people... I don't know if I saw the battery people, but they're like, oh, you can't use a deep cycle battery for your machine. And I'm thinking like, why not? Like, what's, what's the difference? So if you know, put it in the con. Oh, I got my hand right over my phone. Um, yeah, if you know why you can't or why you shouldn't, or even what's really the difference, like what makes a deep cycle battery a deep cycle battery? Is it, uh, you know, because they are a little bit more money and... Uh, my thought is if it holds its charge longer and everything, a tiny little engine like this case backhoe really takes nothing to turn over. Uh, all you need is a little bit of juice and it, and, it, and it usually fires right away, especially if you get the ether can going right away. So like, I would think that's a perfect application. I understand if you're going to crank over a big engine, you know, that maybe wouldn't be the best, but uh, I don't know. Anyways, if you know why you're not supposed to put... Or maybe that's not even true. Maybe you can put deep cycle batteries in, in machines. I don't know. I just heard you couldn't or you shouldn't. And uh, we always do. Works out just fine. They are a more expensive battery, so we don't we don't buy deep cycle batteries to put in machines. It's just when we have one laying around. Because this backhoe wouldn't start this morning, 
And this is how this whole day started. It wouldn't start, so I took the battery out, I put it on the charger. Charger wouldn't work because the wires were broke, so then I fixed the wires. And then I put it on the charger. And then I got my phone, and a guy said, can I come this afternoon for some totes of molasses? The only way we can load the molasses is with the pallet forks on the backhoe. So then I said, well, I'll just grab this deep cycle battery. Dad said it was good, and we'll just put it in here because it was just sitting in the shop waiting to go back into a trolling motor boat. But, uh, yeah, so deep cycle batteries. Why are they different, and can you put them in machines? Like, what does it matter? Well, good noon, I guess. It is actually 12 o'clock. So, what are we doing today? It is Sunday. We're plowing snow. Of course, we're plowing snow. I'm pretty sure I plowed more snow this year already than I did all of last year. And this is the second time we plowed snow. So, uh, not the end of the world. I, uh, I don't mind plowing snow. Kind of a mindless job. You just hop in there and listen to some <clears throat> FM radio. And, uh, you know, you're alone with your thoughts, just pushing dirt, or not pushing snow. And dirt, because the ground hasn't froze, so you make a hell of a mess. Uh, a couple people going to come get their bags. We left a couple bags outside. Not a big deal. Uh, I'll go knock the snow off them, because it's like one degree right now, so the snow is falling off the trees, making everything super duper slippery. Because now there's a bit of water on top of the ice that we had. Because a little bit of snow is melting. As soon as you drive over it and it gets a little bit of darkness on it, it starts to melt right away. I think I might put my light up today. Seems like a good day to do that. I'm going to put a light up there. I'm going to put a switch on it. It'll be a yard light, but uh, it'll be a yard light with a switch, not a photo cell. These are all the bags we've been making for the last week i was just looking through a book we made actually we made a hundred bags in about uh in about 14 days it's been totally crazy uh, this is the totes Corey got them stacked up there that's all our empty totes got another load of molasses coming on wednesday of this week uh, took this these shelves out of the shop when we were cleaning the shop i'm gonna stack them up in here somewhere Make myself a bit more shelving because right now I just have a disaster. Always lots of little odds and ends. Uh, but I think right now I'm going to grab the back hole and run up and get a really tall ladder. And climb up there. And drill a hole and mount my light. Alright, well I was in. Had a little bit of lunch. And uh, snow's falling off the... Uh, off the roof so it's pretty warm <clears throat> but i've been uh, making some headway on my light here i got to uh climb up and tighten it so it doesn't because it's adjustable right there's three lights and they all adjust different ways so uh i'm gonna sneeze <clears throat> one thing i wish they would do and maybe the higher quality ones are like that but they should have the nuts welded on there because they got stupid allen wrench bolts and then cheap nuts that uh and they're really small so i don't even know what size wrench quarter inch wrench or something and uh the other one's like half inch but i just got a crescent wrench so i gotta climb up there quick and uh and tighten that up i, d I drilled a hole so the wire should be all the way through into the shed and i was gonna put it on its own light oh yeah the wire's already through i was gonna put it on its own light switch but I think I'm just gonna wire it up to the lights in here because if you come out and turn this on, you probably want the lights on here too. So we'll see how it goes. The backhoe here is, uh, it's here for safety and it's definitely uh, OHS approved. I just stuck the fork through the ladder. So in case it slips, I don't fall and die. Well, good evening. So it's, uh, it's five o'clock here now. Got my light mounted up there. It's probably a little small to reach all the way over here, but <clears throat> any light's better than no light. I finished this last tote. Corey filled a few more today. We had a couple people bring their own totes. They're sitting over there full. And uh, figured me as well point out the manifold that Dad built. So pretty straightforward. <clears throat> we were actually a little bit nervous once he built it that we didn't know if this black pipe would actually take the 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 pressure or the you know the air pressure they use when they blow the lines out but the guy was here on what thursday last week and uh 
he was pretty excited about it instead of hooking up to each tank individually and blowing out his line when he when the tank was full and moving to the next tank he can just hook up right here <clears throat> and we can open all four valves because it's all the same stuff and uh boom fill up the tanks so that's how that all goes <clears throat> i am waiting for two people to come get their bags and then uh that guy's gonna come get his two totes so i uh i'll get this one off the scale and put in the line and then i'll get this stuff all closed up and then that'll be it for me tonight so as always to those who are watching uh thank you very much and we will see you all on the next one